and then this will bring it out.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I wanted to mention that Father Ivan is in the back hearing confessions for anyone who would like to go to the sacrament. In the second mystery, we contemplate the scourging at the pillar. Let us pray. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <clears throat> As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, 
Ave Maria. In the third mystery, we contemplate the Blanking on it. Laura, help me out. Hmm? The crowning with thorns. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The fourth mystery, we contemplate the caring of the cross. Let us pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <clears throat> Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. In the fifth mystery, we contemplate the crucifixion and death of the Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We fly to your patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us from all dangers, O ever glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Saint Joseph, Saint John, Saint John Henry Newman, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Welcome to St. Anne's. This evening we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. And for the entrance song, we're going to replace the usual hymn with the antiphon, the entrance antiphon of the Mass. So we're going to sing that a number of times so we can learn it a bit. And when we come around the second or the third time, you can repeat it. Please stand and join us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent, and in this first Sunday we accompany Christ Jesus into the desert as he prepares for his mission. He battles temptation, and so he gains strength for us to fight against temptation as well. Christian life has a dimension of combat, and we come to the Eucharist to be strengthened. We celebrate this Mass for the repose of the soul of Stephen Savo. As we enter this Mass, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Land, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all the ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Remember that 
at your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, O A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now. It is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. 
the gospel of the Lord. Just recently, on Ash Wednesday, with the imposition of ashes, we began the season of Lent. That is like, if you think of it, it's like a 40-day retreat that the entire church goes into to prepare for Easter. We prepare every Easter to renew our identity in Christ, our belonging to Christ and the church. And so we need to prepare to do it in a meaningful way. And we imitate what Jesus did before his public ministry. Jesus himself went to the desert led, led by the Holy Spirit to prepare for that public ministry. The Gospel of Mark maybe has the shortest account of that going uh, into the desert and being tempted. And he, St. Mark notes, however, he was there, he was tempted by Satan. Jesus knew was going there to find temptation and trial. It's as if before all the temptations and trials he would face in his public life, he wanted first to face those trials in the battle of prayer, sort of to overcome Satan in, in his own soul, in his own uh, dealing with him in the desert. Now, it is a bit striking that Jesus accepts a path that has all these temptations, if you think of it, because many times we hear that it's important to avoid temptations. We even say in the act of contrition, I will avoid occasions of sin. I should kind of run away from temptations. So if we shouldn't expose ourselves to spiritual dangers, why does Jesus go this way into the desert? Is he being a bit reckless maybe? Is he taking too many risks? Well, I, I think you would be reckless if you chose to expose yourself to temptations needlessly, without being called for. The principle of avoiding occasions of sin applies to areas in which we may feel especially weak, and when there's no need to go into temptation. For example, I, I was doing works of mercy just recently with a group of our students, and we walked by this store of Swiss chocolates. And not just nicely wrapped, colorful boxes. I mean slabs of chocolate of all hues and shapes and, and with all kinds of nuts. And I thought to myself, this is the kind of store I should not walk by if I can avoid it, you know, especially in Lent. So there are things like that. There are th things that we should kind of walk the other way because we know we are weak. But when it's about pursuing your mission in life, when it's about using the talents that God has given you to improve them, to grow them, and to use them for other people, then it's okay to accept a path in which you will be tempted. Even more, it may be your duty to go into a path in which you'll find temptation, because let's face it, if you seek to serve God and do great things in this life, you will find battles. You will be tempted to pride, and many times you will be angry with people around you. And many times you'll face some maybe envy because other people are doing similar things. And maybe they shine more than you at the moment. If you are successful, you'll feel you're, you may be tempted to vanity. If you're not going, doing so well, you may be tempted to discouragement and sadness. But if you're afraid of this, if you run away from all these temptations because that's danger, you will find other temptations. A temptation to become selfish and wrapped around yourself and become lazy and all fearful and less generous and more callous and to maybe even lose faith and to disregard the voice of God in your life. So not entering into that path of battle also has its own temptations. So I think that's a temptation that is very common today, however, to avoid going into the desert because it's just too much trouble. Here's how the temptation could be phrased in today's terms. I want to do things that are tailored exactly for me. I don't want to go at any moment out of my comfort zone. 
or be bothered in any significant way. In, in short, I don't want to fight. I don't want any hassle. That's the temptation. And I think that you know, to, give, to give in to this temptation has some serious consequences. One of them is that we lose accountability to other people, something that we really need. We lose accountability and we tend to isolate ourselves. Because obviously doing things with other people and being accountable to them is challenging. If I want to do things that are tailored for me, well, obviously I cannot work with other people because there will be different preferences. Working with others will lead me to work better, more efficiently, but also I will clash with people. I may find gossip or uh, disagree with others. So I may say, well, I want to avoid all of that. Yes, but I will lose the excitement and the excellence and the effectiveness. The other consequence that we will face if we try to avoid every fight, and kind of try to find the easy way without much hassle, is that we will run away from commitment. We run away from any commitment because any commitment brings with it the potential of some future trial. What if I commit and then in the future I feel different about this? What if I discover a better opportunity or someone better? What if the relationship starts to break down, to fall apart? So we may say, it's too risky. I'll avoid it. But then, you know, we also lose the deeper kind of relationship and confidence that can only be found in committed relationships. All those things that only happen in marriage or in a consecrated vocation, in the priesthood, in becoming a parent, in committed friendship, in commitment to a cause or a faith community. There's a story in, that I uh, remember always in the life of St. John Henry Newman that illustrates this temptation of wanting to avoid any inconvenience or difficult path. It was at a point in which the Irish bishops were asking Newman to, be, to lead the efforts to establish the first Catholic university in Dublin, in Ireland. This was around the 1850s. And Newman was a famous convert from Anglicanism. He was a scholar. And he was in his 50s at the time. So one afternoon, John Henry Newman decided to go north of London and visit a good friend of his, Richard, who was also a scholar from Oxford, now retired, to seek his advice. Richard was, had a, kind of different views than Newman's, but Newman valued him. He said, he's a, he's a wise man. I want to see what he thinks. He's a good friend. So he went, and he does a great job in describing the house of this man, this impeccable English lawn, the beautiful trees, and the amazing mansion this man had, and how he enjoyed his books and his dogs, and great life, in reti retired now. And so a friendly debate began to take place. Newman said, well, uh, you just live for yourself, Richard. And Richard said, you know, he couldn't understand why Newman was embarking himself on such a complicated journey at a time in his life when he could already be relaxing and, and kind of waiting for retirement. He said to Newman, John, why are you getting into all this trouble? And most of all, he said, you're an Englishman. What do you have to do with the Irish? I don't know about that objection. And Newman replied in his writings, he replies with a phrase that stuck with me. He says, kind of in response to Richard and that mentality, he says, what right has anyone to retire from the world and profit no one? What right do we have to retire from the world and, and benefit no one? Well, I think that's a phrase that stems from a Christian understanding of life, of someone who believes that this life is not the only thing there is, and we have a purpose that was given by God to us in this life. And we will only find who we are in connection to that purpose. So for Newman, that desert, going into the fight at that time in his life, meant going to Dublin, and going to those Catholics in Ireland that needed him, and to those families, and to those young people that wanted to see him as a leader in education. That was his desert. But the question tonight is, what is your desert? 
What is that battle that Christ is inviting you to enter into and not run away from? It may be some, something in family life for you, dealing with some situation that's not easy, not running away from it, but carrying the cross. It may be supporting a coworker or a friend that is struggling right now. It may be speaking to your brother when it's easier just to avoid him. It may be praying faithfully when, even when you don't feel like it. It may be having that important conversation in your marriage. It may be accepting that path that God has for your vocation in marriage or in religious life. But face your battle. Don't run away from it. Don't give in to this mentality of, I'll just choose the easy path. It's too much trouble to go into this one. Because you may miss the opportunity to find who you are meant to be in the eyes of God. So how do we get started? Let me suggest three quick things to conclude here. The first one is to start with fighting the idea itself. You know, whenever you catch yourself discarding some good possibility because, well, it's too complicated, think twice. Things don't need to be discarded because they're difficult or problematic. Just evaluate them for what they are. Don't just take the challenge as an immediate no. The second one is wage small battles that will strengthen you. Lent is a great season for that. Begin waging those small daily battles that will strengthen your soul. Because if you become good at these smaller battles, when the big one comes, you will feel like, I think I could tackle that. If you fail or you re run away from the small battles, the big ones will seem just overwhelming, impossible. Small battles are tidy up your room, exercise, get up early, respond to emails and calls, be on time to your appointments, Develop a discipline of prayer. Those are small battles, but if you face them, if you start at least picking some of them and face them, facing them faithfully, you will grow. You will be stronger. You will be more confident. And finally, work on the areas that you need to grow. There's no generic deserts. There is your desert. The desert is the one you had to fight if you tend to work too much, if you're kind of an overachiever, well, slow down and spend more time with God and other people around you. If your issue is technology, it's becoming addi addictive, do something about it. Tackle your desert. That's where the reluctance will be. That's where you will try to run away. So what is that? What is that battlefield that the Lord is presenting to you and telling you, come with me? Let's enter into that desert together. May we pray. Lord Jesus, show me what is that desert you want me to enter. And give me the fortitude that I need to face my temptations. Lead me, Lord, to give of myself and so fulfill the mission for which you have created me. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us profess together our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this season of Lent, God calls us to be renewed in our spirit. Let us therefore open our hearts to our Lord in prayer. That this Lent may be a time of reconciliation within our families, our parish, in our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who serve our church as pastors, teachers, and counselors may lead us in our search for the wisdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be preparing for baptism and for reception into the church at Easter, that these 40 days may be a time of joyful discovery of God's great love for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parishioners who are ill or recovering, for all who are imprisoned, abused, or suffering in any way, that they may be delivered from every evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people may follow the crucified Christ by their total self-offering of him, to him as priests, or religious. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful who have died may be reborn in the eternal life of the victorious Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God our Father will hear the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear the prayers we offer to you, O Lord. During these holy days of Lent, may we dedicate ourselves to the work of your grace and rely on your strength through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings. For with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lent and of servants, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the, to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant. He desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, 
saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Then we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O God, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Lord Jesus, you are the Lord. And you have come to us in this sacrament. We're beginning the journey of Lent, Lord Jesus. Strengthen my heart for the good fight that I may be eager to go into the desert with you and face the trials and grow from them. Lord, I rely in your power because it's your will that I go for this, that mission and face those challenges. Give me your courage and fight with your divine power in me. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. And just a few announcements for this, this week. Confessions during Lent will be held every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. So Wednesday 7 to 8 p.m. And also at the time during the Rosary, right before Mass, 6.30 to 7 p.m. Stations of the Cross are every Friday during Lent 
11.30 a.m. and 7, 7 p.m. If you want to receive weekly inspirational Lenten reflections from Bishop Barron uh, sent by the parish, you can sign up for our parish emails on our website at sanandc.org. And this weekend, uh, parishioners are invited to also make their commitment to this year's annual appeal. We talked about that last Sunday, but you can still do it if you haven't done it by visiting appeal.adw.org, appeal.adw.org to learn about, more about that. And finally, I wanted to make a special request. Um, we, uh, this, this community has been very generous with us, but we also need to especially appeal to your generosity because we've always been able to fund our, the things we do, but now with COVID and the smaller numbers of ma and people in mass, we are barely making really, uh, covering the expenses of our regular things for mass every Sunday. So if you could make a special point in contributing to this mass in your regular tithing, that'd be great. So we can continue providing the best service and the best ministries. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.